Oh, I'm so happy to be here. So that, uh, just before I start, when someone reads your history, it looks like more important. So it was, my God, I wrote this. So I am from Brazil. I'm so happy to be here. It's a big responsibility to talk now because a lot of good and very, very good speakers talking. I came from Brazil, Sao Paulo. This is Sao Paulo there. So I, I make some software consultancy and I have some customers to think more how they could spend less money in software and how could avoid some uh, problems. And this talk is, is about serverless applications and how the serverless applications could work and how is the future and what we have to expect for the future as well. Just to think how many of you have never seen serverless application before or work it before? Uh, just, oh, yeah, yeah. I think my, this is kind of my opinion. I think a lot of uh, experience that I, I've worked with. Uh, service applications, I, when I talk to someone, do you know service applications? Service applications. So the old guy said, no, that is impossible, service applications. And this term is a misunderstanding about a lot of people. And a lot of people just bring to me the idea. So, oh, okay, I will just burn my server. So I don't need a server anymore. So I just... Uh, using like this, but no, we, we, we actually, we send the responsibility to other people or other platform to manage our code. But before we start, let's see where we do now or where we are now. So we are in the age of the fancy words. So we have a lot of hype is coming. We have a lot of trendies. We have a lot of people trying to create new frameworks every day and every day creating new things. And let's take a look in some terms that is good, like if you are going to get a remote job with the girl there. So maybe this is kind of thing to talk in an uh, interview. So we have a monolith system. So monolith system is all of the features of the system is uh, on a single program. So we have all of the responsibilities in one, one single program. And we have microservices. So microservices, we just split the responsibility. And this program now, we have bounded context. So we have a lot of independent, independent uh, deployment, tests, and we have other good things to think about microservices as well. But microservices alone is hard to manage. So we need someone to help to manage these microservices. So we have Docker to isolate my microservices, to help to, to improve more, to scale, and to think a little bit more. But Docker alone doesn't work. So we have to someone to just think about Docker that we have Kubernetes now. So the Kubernetes will control and will scale my application on demand. So if I need to handle a Black Friday or some huge event, we have to, to use something to manipulate. As a developer, when we see a lot of the words, the first thing is, oh my God, what I have to learn. So I have a lot of terms to think. We have a lot of things coming every day and it's very hard, but I have a good, and not so good question for you or information for you that I will show you more one concept. So the next concept is serverless architecture. So serverless architecture is based on microservices. So we use that with a third part platform and we take a look some how it works and how we could improve. It's it also called by function as a services, serverless or other alias that we face now. But actually, we, we already work at that. So now I have a, a, a single code that I could send to other people and or other platform. And in this case, I just receive a request from a mobile application and I have my API. So my API is just the, the wall that we choose, which is the function or each, which file will respond for this request. In this case, it's AWS Lambda, but could be any platforms that we will see later. But we just receive, so, okay, this JavaScript function, this function will receive this data, and maybe we'll store the image on database or my storage hub or my database or streams. And then I will just take a look what I could do using that. So it's a very good approach. So 
all of these services is already on AWS, on Azure or Google uh, Cloud Platform that we could use, but we will see the good and the ugly in the next slides. I think the key concept for my customers is pay as you go. So sometimes a lot of them has servers and they, they are waiting for Black Friday events. So sometimes they have huge servers and they don't use the server. They just install Doom 95 and some other things to use more processing. And this kind of thing is very good in serverless application, but we will see later that it's not so good to pay for use. And all of our code is managed for other platforms. So I, I want to scale my code or I want to think more about my code. Each instance is isolated. So when I receive a request, this kind of, or this kind of platform will schedule my, my stance or will handle for me for a hundred customers or a million customers. So it's very nice. And we have, I think the most cloud providers already use that in their context. So you could use IBM, AWS, Azure, or Off Zero. I've never seen Off Zero before, but it works as in this post. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. And basically, it's a trigger and an action. So it's a re request response that we use there. So something happens, and I have to make a decision what I will do later. So in this case, I could be uh, HTTP events that we use a lot for APIs. We could use our Chrome job. So I could check uh, a few times to see if my database is running or if the data is still there. And I could get all of this information. Or I could make some smarter uh, applications as well. So when my customer put a file in a storage file, I could make a decision or something happens on my database or when I, I could make like a log pattern as well. So if my customer are paying just for 1 million requests, when I have 1 million and one, I will just send an event for me and say, oh, this customer just reached the limit. What do you have to do? So what we want to do? So we could make some decisions based on it. In this case, <laughs> In this case, I have a CSV file. So in this case, I have Aladdin there, some birthday. It's very simple. But let's imagine that I get this data and I will send to my hub. In this hub, I have my storage that could be any storage, could be a Google Drive as well. But OK, my customer said, oh, I have this file and I want you to process this file. That's oh, okay, okay, okay. This is serverless microphone. Oh, in this case, I just receive the the CSV and I send to my customer in the storage hub. And when now we are moving from microservices to this kind of architecture, when I got I the first thing I think is okay. The platform will manage to me my processing, my memory, everything. So I don't want to think about oh, the microphone. Oh, <laughs> I don't have to think about what I will run. In this case, I receive one million items, and I will process on a JS file. So I don't care how many memory or how much memory I will use, and I will save on database. But okay, let's just see the table of this. So I have the time is that 10 minutes to process 1 million items. I have Okay. Literally. Like up here. Yeah. And then make sure the direction finishes it. Okay. Yeah, try it again. Just get, and you stand back where you were hit. You know, okay. Just fine. So talk. Test. You you project fantastically. So okay. <laughs> Test. Oh. Yeah, now it's better, yeah. Okay, so in this case, I have the table and I have the time. So the time is 10 minutes. So 10 minutes to process 1 million items and I have 80 gigabytes of CPU and a lot of memory to use. But mostly of the platforms use this to 
use the limit for five minutes. So if you have more than five minutes, you have to schedule other thing or you have to, to think about other strategy. So it doesn't work in our real scenario. So AWS, Google Cloud, and actually, if you want more than five minutes using this kind of architecture, maybe you have other approach to solve your problem. In this case, we have a file there, and I will process this file using a function that is just map this, these items and send you a queue. So I have my, my item with 10 items there, and I will map to JSON, and I will send to the queue. And when this item arrive on the queue, I could process in parallel. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, I could process everything in parallel. So all of these functions will be executed in the same time. And what I use it to make in five minutes, now I could make in 30 seconds. So I could improve better. Oh, here we go. Oh, old school now. Oh. Okay, so for each item, I send you a function, and the function will execute. Talk about code. Everything is an event here, so I receive this event. I will get the data from this event, so I will process the object, the key, I will see how is the size of my application, and then I will convert from CSV to JSON, and then I could have the value. So now I have my JSON array, from the CSV, and now it's a JSON, and then I will send to the queue. So for each item, I will schedule one instance of my Lambda or my function. When this event arrives on my queue service, I have one file or one item to process, and I will receive this, and I could send and process in parallel. So it's very performative to use that, but we have some drawbacks with this kind of uh, approach as well. But for long, long running processing, we just split our responsibilities and we could make by uh, even driven. So uh, when I see just resolving like this, I was just, oh, now it works. Oh, uh, now I could process something and now serverless is magic. But no, yeah, we know that in the real life we have some drawbacks. So we have to think what is good or not to our application. Uh, pay as you go. I think, okay, I want to pay to use for use or what I'm really using. But my developers are trying to use the database and the database will pay for read and write. They, they want to use the QE. You, you have to pay for each request there. And sometimes you are in just testing and you have to pay for this test. Uh, this is my AWS account. I will give you a zoom for you. It's $1,000 in one month. So my customer was sad with me, but yeah, it was bad, 1,000, yeah. And I just said, no, no, you will spend less money than a VM, and I'm 1,000. But it was a, a feature about AWS. So when you, you have the AWS, you have a SQS, that is a service to queue your messages, and you, oh, and you receive this data and you send and you schedule a lambda. So you don't know what's going on or if it's, it's correctly or if it's ready. But you send uh, a limit, you say, oh, if it, this lambda this, this land that doesn't work in two seconds, I need to reschedule other function. So my terms set this time out with zero. So we have a while through scheduling a lot of lambdas and we know just in the end of the month. So yeah, we know that scale, yeah, but it's not so good sometimes. And we are a little bit, this is a, a little bit bad, like third party platform. Uh, we have to think which is better for me. And sometimes Azure is not completely 100% good for me. Sometimes AWS is not 100% good for me. And when we think about this kind of application, we face that. On Microsoft Azure, I have a lot of services to learn. It actually is a lot of APIs, but you have to learn the concepts. We have to study how the API works and pricing. We have the AWS, a lot of services. That's going to be hard. And we have the GCP as well. So yeah, it's, it could be hard sometimes. 
we have a concept that called my co-star. So when I, I didn't receive a new request from 24 hours or some, some hours, the infrastructure just stopped. And then when you receive the next request, they will start and then this new start will take a while, like one second or two seconds. And then we could face something like this. So in this case is a, a performance test that the, the guy were making. We have a, a post on the, the next slide. But they are just seeing the, the timeout. So how many requests you receive is faster. So if you not, didn't receive a new request, could be slowly. To solve this problem, they are creating some events to ping other functions to stay warm. So I think it's not a good approach if you're thinking about pricing and to pay only about what you really, really want. And decentralized architecture in this case is not so good. So sometimes you split your problem in many other problems. So you could face something like this. So when a developer arrives, well, oh, this is my crud. Try to understand that. It's not so easy. So we have to explain each piece of our architecture and it could be hard. So yeah, it's not so, so easy. And if I want to install something more, like in my case, I try to install a Selenium web driver or a tier, and I can't install a Linux package. So I just have my NPM project, I zip this NPM code, and I upload to the platform. In this case, I had to get my binary and upload my binary to the application. So this is not so good. Thinking about a lot of these problems, we think, okay, serverless doesn't work for me. No, it's not so good. This has a lot of problems and maybe it doesn't work, but let's go, let's talk about the real and why we are here. So my opinion, technology agnostic. So I want to learn more other languages. I want to try new frameworks. I want to see what is going on with my application or which case could be better. And use this kind of applications. We could have one language for each function. So in this case, Python could be my API, Java could process the event after the database, and C Sharp could send an email to my customer. So I could have other applications running at the same time. And no worries about scale. So yeah, $1,000 in one month, yeah, it scales, yeah. And this, it, it's very good. When you make your, your, your first project, you could think what could be better and if it works for 100, we work for 1 million as well. Uh, we have now independent deployment, so you could deploy a small function there. So the small function is a bounded context. You have one responsibility to work there, or if you want, you could put more. But it's easier than a monolith, by example. In this case, we have an easy deployment, so small functions or a group of functions. And because the functions is small, we could just create functions to test each one. But to test a single function is easy. To test the workflow is not so easy. So we have to think more how we could create that. And in this case, the benefit is a decentralized architecture. So I have a lot of teams working on my project or I have teams working around the world and it could be better. They just think, oh, what event I have to receive? Okay, I know the event, I will process and I will send to the queue again and my job is done. So this could be really, really nice. But we are here because we are developers, we want more money, so we are thinking more how we could start the next week. So to start, I really recommend the serverless framework. So you could use the CLI from AWS, the CLI from Azure, but I think the serverless uh, framework is a very uh, impressive framework. Now it's just working, I think it's working, working really fine on AWS in other platforms it's not working so well, but for us is nice. So you could define some configuration files and then you could specify how is the access. So in this case, I could get an item for my storage, I could send just the folder, 
I could bring the permission just to send a message so I avoid a lot of things like my customer trying to access data for other customers. So in this case, you could access just this folder and you have no problem more. And to specify my function, I just say sp specify the file. So in this file is a array on my path. So I will specify which is my function for each handle. In this case, it's my route file. And then I will just specify which is the event. So in this case, will happen something when disconnect storage receive a file, will trigger the ST trigger. When a new message arrive in this queue, will trigger this function. So it's very, in this case, it's very close to our uh, RESTful APIs. And a lot of people starting serverless, they think, oh, AWS cloud formation. So I just deploy my application and they, they create a lot of things. Using this kind of application, we could just define what they have to create for me. So when I, my application is done or when I move to my account, I could just inform how they will create the whole thing inside my application. So my queue will be created and my database will uh, provide as well. And the plugins. So the plugins, I think is uh, ability to extend my application or extend my, my tools inside my development team. So we could create a lot of things. And I think this is the key point of the talk. So you could forgot everything, but just remember that because, because this, you will spend less money in your team. So first of all, tests. So everyone tests the applications. Oh, I know. Uh, and then, then, okay. In this case, we have a service mocha, so we could create templates to use my application. We could uh, just run some command lines to execute our application there. Uh, we have a serverless offline as well. So the serverless offline is the key point. So for my application, I have to deploy and I have to try it because it's a S3. S3 is a service from AWS or SKS is a service from AWS and I have to be uh, to test in production. So it's not so easy and you have to spend money in that. With this framework, we could, with this plugin, we just run on our machine and we could spend less to make something good. And what I really love is the DynamoDB plugin. So we just run the DynamoDB inside my machine. I could test, I could stress the DynamoDB and then I publish in production. So I think most of the money that we use there is because we don't use this, we didn't use this kind of tool. So they are always trying to access the production environment and the final uh, environment as well. So should we start? Oh, could you hear me? Oh. To start, I will create a simple function here. So to create a, a simple function, I will just create my serverless mocha just to see how this plugin works. And I will open on my code. The best editor in the world. Oh. VS code. Oh, it's a magic. So I will, I will show the command. So I just created a template. So the serverless framework provide a template for us. We could use this template to create a lot of things. Like in this case, I created for APIs and I open on my VS code. So they provide me a, a simple code here in my configuration file. To start, I will start a NPM project or a Node.js project and install this mock -up plugin to test my application to see if everything is going okay. I installed this, uh, this plugin. I have to register this plugin. So I will pass just the plugins and I will just copy paste the name. I will just put this plugin there. So I will put the plugin, so I register with plugin. Once this plugin is here, I could run other commands. So I could create a test and I put, I pass my function. So my function name 
is already here functions hello I will create a test to this uh, route so I will run they will create a template for me so when I see now on test I have the skeleton here to create my application so it's very nice in this case I will pass a query string and will be value value 1 and v2 2 3 and should be 1 plus 3 equals 4 equals 4 oh. and then the body has to be equal a 4 I will explain why the string when I try to run I have to invoke this test I will run so our flow we have two broken applications so we have now to out to alter this uh, function and then I will just get this parameter so cost v1 and v2 from event dot query string oh, parameter and then I will just make our sum with parse int uh, v1 plus parse int v2 why string here is because the pattern of serverless if you use other kind of type here they will show no no you have to use a string because it's the pattern and now when I try to run my test I have my test working and then I will just put uh, the event here so I just tr I just test my function but I want to try a HTTP request so in this case I will put on path hello on get so when I have a uh, get uh, request for hello I will respond with this file and for that I will just run SLS invoke let me see invoke function how you copy to don't lose oh. I will just invoke this function but to invoke this function I have this whole command so I have to run invoke local oh. I have to run invoke local and I have to pass some parameters and it doesn't look like how it works in production so my customer don't know about this command so when I run I have my result actually I don't have a server running when I run invoke local they will ask for this function query string parameters I think maybe I pass the number the name is wrong and let me just see if the name here okay and then when I run I have the result so this result is okay but it's not the true so to run the true I will install the serverless offline so I will open a, a new server in my machine and then I could make a get request or a post request really truly in my application after I run this I have just to register my serverless and then on my plugin my plugin session I will just put here serverless offline after put this I could run SLS offline start they will open a server for me and I could go to my navigator and try to test so when I try to test now with my curve with the same query string I could have the really truly result and this is very nice that is very nice and for DynamoDB that is the database is the same I will run this just stop this function I will run SLS offline start they will up my database locally I have all of my routes here and then I could make my operations so I will just insert some item there 
and I could see on my database the data here so my data was there and then I could have a, a get that is looks like a restful API as I work it in my uh, usually daily so I think this plugin is very nice it's very nice and you should try to use that to spend less money and you have the SKS as well and you have a lot of plugins to simulate other services and try locally and to try to authentication authentication we have to think uh, about some steps so but it looks like a rest for APIs as well so you have the login and the login will just send me a token with this token I have an authorizer function so they will verify my token they will uh, verify my policies and I have actually if they could access this function and we have actually the authorizer here so I will pass the parameter here and they will call first the other function and if everything is, is going good I could access so I think Batman proved that so it's very nice so. and I think the last tool of today is the X-Ray. So the X-Ray is a, a tool of AWS, but they could provide for you a source map. So if I receive an event from S3 and I send to my Kiwi, I could see the whole map automatically. So it's, it's very useful to see when your application is increasing. And let's talk about the future. So I was in the Google Cloud Next, and they just released the Google Cloud Run. Is ability to use Docker as serverless. So when I saw that, I just, oh my God, you could use Docker with that. So my problem today is I have to think about AWS, Google, or other thing. With this, I don't need. I just need to know Docker, and I could upload my microservices, my legacy application to the cloud, and just pay to use. So to start with this kind of application, I will just clone a, a project here. And I have my Docker file and Docker Compose. So my Docker file is very simple. It's just to build my application and to see what is going on. And I have my application as well. It's a API in Node.js. So they don't know that what is serverless. They don't know what is happening in my project. And then I will build this image. So it's the same of the Docker build. So I will build my image in my local machine. And then I will upload to the Docker registry on Google. So I will build. I'm not using yet, but I will build and I will upload. And then I could make the deploy. So deploy, I will use the image that I created. I will pass my environment variables. I could use the region. So the region available now is only the central one. And we have to pass the flag to be public. So with this flag, we could use everywhere and everyone could use. So we just deploy. Uh, remember, this function is, this services is in beta. So they just released now and I'm trying to test. And, but it works very fine. And now we just copy the URL and, just, and we'll see on the browser. So on the browser, I will just put there. I will wait for the connections and for my services starting. And then I could see my microservices, my legacy application running there with the whole API. So for me, if all of the applications follow the same pattern, we are very, very good. Some conclusions. So use whenever you want, I think it's the first one. So use what is better for you. Use what is better for each solution or each problem. And think more about the cost or sometimes to don't work on Saturdays. So to, to go to conferences and to think more about it. Okay, so thank you so much, all of you, for coming. I'm very happy to be here. Here I put the slides presentations. Uh, you could see the whole uh, resources here. I just take a look because I miss one, but it's okay. Uh, we have time to questions. So just shout out and it should be back. Okay. Uh, so I will publish the slides there in this Twitter as well. If, if you wanna follow to get the slides presentation and the whole resources, feel free, okay?
Yeah, actually, yeah, you could, but I think the mindset is a little bit different. Like for each lambda, you have a, a responsibility that is uh, to generate a new event. So you just mock this event and you test your other application. You could open a two servers, but what we usually do, what we usually do is we mock this event, which is JSON, and we work through in this kind of thing. More questions? So questions, questions. Oh, the gist was hard to find. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, I think it's, uh, I've tried, uh, a lot of customers that I'm trying to, to work or they are working with servers, they, they think that is good because we don't need a senior developer or a very, very experienced developers to develop this kind of application. They just have servers and they have a leader that look for outside and see what is the functions or how is the workflow, but to develop they just find, oh, this is the JSON, I have to do this, and this is the output, so it's very nice. Okay, more questions? Questions? Okay, so thank you so much again. <laughs>